Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we will be talking about my new PvE destroying machine, the Archangel of Death. Again, if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. So as you're getting ready for the Grandmaster Nightfalls, we all know going into them that we're going to be underleveled, which means that you're going to have to really be really good at PvE, or you're going to have to put on some monster builds, and I have a good build for you. This build is going to allow you to minimize damage to your character, maximize damage to your opponents, and to survive as long as you can within these sort of events. And it'll also be good for other areas. I've been using it within the Legendary Law Sectors for the bunkers, and it's been useful there. So let's talk about how you build this. The build I'm talking about is the Archangel of Death. I guess I thought if I said it like that, it'd be more impactful. You guys will have to let me know. Um, so how do you start this build? Well, first off, this build requires you to use the Striker Titan. We're talking about Top Tree. So what, what in that top tree is useful? You'll get an extra grenade because this build is very oriented around grenades. Your grenades will last longer. You also have the seismic strike melee while running. And when you hit that melee, it'll also speed up grenade, grenade generation. So that's going to be the first thing. This build is very built around that. The second thing is going to be Risk Runner. Now, why is Risk Runner useful? Risk Runner, if you take arc damage... You cause a more powerful arc attack that can, and you can also resist incoming arc damage. So how is that useful? And how is that useful for this build? Well, obviously, if you take some arc damage, anybody who's used Risk Runner knows that you can do an incredible amount of damage and kind of spawn off a lot of kills off of a lot of enemies. The other thing is, if you take your grenade and throw it at your feet, and again, you have to throw it right at your feet, it'll actually allow this to proc. So even if you're in a strike or something else without arc damage, you can use that to start this effect. So now let's talk about mods. So with the season, there are some mods that are going to be specific that are only be used this season, and there's some that you will have going into other se seasons. First off, there's Tyrant Surge. This allows you, when you deal damage with the Arc Melee, Super, and Grenade ability, to spawn a War Mine cell. And where you, this is useful is that you can throw a grenade near you at enemies, and usually you'll get a War Mine cell to pop. Then what's next? Surge Detonators. Arc grenades cause disruption, delaying ability regeneration and lowering co combatant damage output, strong against overload champions. So again, with this one, if you throw a grenade at an overload champion, you, know, you got to time that, right? Because those things can really destroy you. But if you do that, it's immediately going to put out a war mine cell. It's also going to disrupt the overlord champion, which is useful. Then I use war mine longevity, which allows your war mine cells to last longer. I use Power of Rasputin. You gain a bonus to weapon damage against enemies near Warmind Cell. So again, you need to have the Warmind Cell land near whatever you're trying to kill. It'll allow you to do bonus damage. Then I use Warmind's Protection, which allows you to take reduced damage from enemies when you're near Warmind Cell. So think about it this way. You, you're, disru you're partially disrupted this Overload Champion or whatever you're working against. You have the cells working on the ground. You're doing more damage and you're taking less damage. Again, in something like a like those Grandmaster Nightfalls, that's going to be really useful. To add to this, then I use a sword. Now, swords have gotten a lot of buffs within this season, but there are also mods that will help you. There's a passive guard mod. This allows you to take less damage while wielding a sword. So not only if you have that cell going, are you going to take less damage, but you can see you're also, when you're wielding a sword, you're going to take even less damage. So you can even get to the point of being critically damaged and because a lot of times that happens when you're in these big group of mobs, and you'll still be able to do damage and, and kind of stay in the fight. I also use um, Disruption Blade, and this is when you actually put on the sword. Consecutive hits cause disruption and delay ability regeneration, lowering combatant damage output, strong against overload champions. So again, this build, so you already are suppressing the overload champions to some extent with the detonators. Then you come in with Disruption Blade, and as you're hitting it, you're gonna to continue to do this. And this will allow them, this will stop them from doing sort of their attacks, and you'll be able to go through them pretty quickly, because again, you're gonna be taking less damage from them, but you're also gonna be doing more damage. I also, on my particular sword, um, this is from the Menagerie, which if you want to see how to get this, I talk about in another video. If you, I have Surrounded on this sword, which allows you when there's three or more enemies, you do more damage. So again, that's really useful in this because in those activities, we're talking about those big PvE activities, you're going to have a ton of ads around you. So it's, again, it's going to build on top of what you're already doing. And then with Relentless Striker that I have on the sword, every three hits that I do on an enemy, I actually get ammo back. So again, it allows you to stay in the fight lo longer. So this is a really good build. Um, I've been using it. 
I uh, started using it in some of the Nightfall Strikes, trying to even solo some of those. I've been using this to actually be able to go through some of the Legendary Lost Sectors and actually not use the power-ups like Rasputin's, the Rasputin power-ups for the mech or for the Valkyrie. I've actually been using this to solo through some of those legendary events even when I'm under leveled and it's been really helpful. So again, I would this is a build I think is really useful. I think it's going to help you out. Um, going into the Grandmasters, what I would do is I would actually go into some of the Nightfalls and try to solo them, the ones that don't have matchmaking, and see how far you can get because I think that's going to be good practice than when you get in the fire team. I'd also recommend if you do this with other people, try to use a similar arc-based uh, abilities with with the other characters that you're playing with the other people in your fire team because if you do this you're all going to benefit when the war mine cells are on the ground you're all going to benefit if you have similar mods in place and that'll help all of you now they can use different they can use different subclasses but the key to this is if they all have the ones with arc and you put an arc grenade down they're all going to benefit and they're all going to get war mine cells and all get the benefits of what you're of what you're doing so again that's what will be useful again this this build has been really useful if you like it uh feel free to to let me know get into the comments let me know what kind of builds are you working on what are you looking at doing for the grandmaster nightfalls again you're going to be capped at 1025 power so you're going to be 25 power no matter what you do underneath where the max is so you're going to have to do some creative stuff what are you looking to do? And even outside the Grandmasters, what sort of PV builds are you looking at? Again, the Archangel of Death is something that I've enjoyed a lot. Um, if you have similar similar builds or things that you'd like to talk about, get in the comments. And again, Guardians, I'll see you guys in the tower.